So one of the things that I want to talk about today, well, mainly the one thing that I want to talk about today, involves motivation for learning. And I think a lot of teachers ask this in their classes, how do I motivate my students to learn? What are some ways that I can motivate them? The reason why I'm talking about motivation on an educational technology podcast is because a lot of times people think that technology is what motivates students. It's the bells and whistles, right? They get to see a cool animation. They get to hear a cool noise or whatever else the technology offers. So motivation and technology have often been linked as a good learning tool. We thought that technology should be there because it motivates students to learn. Let's use technology to motivate students. So, but that's not necessarily the case. Motivation and technology don't always go hand in hand. And really what motivates students is not necessarily the technology, it's the deeper concepts of motivation that could come through use of technology or without that we're going to talk about today. Okay, so again, motivation is not necessarily provided by technology. It's provided by what the technology could offer or may offer, the principles of motivation that have been discovered through research and through study. And so what I want to do is talk first about intrinsic versus extrinsic motivation and differentiate these two terms and then talk about a model to support motivation in your classroom and then tie it back into how technology might be a motivating factor as long as it uses those principles of motivation. So first of all, intrinsic versus extrinsic motivation. And I'll start with extrinsic motivation. Extrinsic motivation is not the good kind of motivation. When you're trying to motivate somebody to learn extrinsically, then you're maybe offering like a piece of candy when they finish their task. So extrinsic motivation means that the student is motivated outside of his or herself. Like there's something extrinsic to the student that is motivating him or her to learn. And research has found actually that this is not a very powerful way of motivating students. That if they are not intrinsically trying to learn on their own type of motivation, if they're being motivated extrinsically, that this is not a very good way for them to be motivated. It, it's not very effective. Intrinsic motivation, on the other hand, is motivation that helps comes from within the student. And so when we're intrinsically motivating someone, we're trying to take advantage of that motivation that's already within the student to do good or to learn. And we're just maybe enhancing it a little bit with the way that we present materials, with the way that we do things. So those are the two different types of uh, motivation. Again, extrinsic is motivation that comes from outside of the student. And intrinsic is motivation that comes from within the student to want to learn. Although you can help support intrinsic motivation. And I'm going to talk about a model for intrinsic motivation right now. So Malone and Leper, many years ago actually, this is an oldie but goodie, but Malone and Leper created this nice little model of intrinsic motivation. It's a taxonomy is what they actually call it, taxonomy of intrinsic motivations and ways that teachers can support motivation intrinsically for students not just giving them a piece of candy or giving them an external reward for their learning, but to help support their intrinsic motivation to learn. And so what they do is they provide some design principles or principles that teachers can do to promote various sources of intrinsic motivation when we're teaching and learning. And again, this is an article that came out uh, over 20 years ago, but it's still a very good article for helping people to be motivated with learning, and we still go back to this a lot in the literature. Okay, so what are the elements of the model then? Well, first is control. Promote student's sense of control over the activity. So again, we're talking about intrinsic motivation versus extrinsic. If a student feels like he or she is intrinsically in control of some aspects of an activity, then that can support their intrinsic motivation. If the activity is of initial intrinsic interest, then don't add extrinsic things onto it because students are already interested in it, right? Don't add something that might ruin the activity. If the activity is of little initial intrinsic interest, then maybe, yeah, some extrinsic things might help. But you want to help embed some controls in the activity where students can actually kind of have a feeling or a sense of control over the activity that they're kind of in charge. They can maybe, maybe they can make a choice of how they're going to complete the activity or how they're going to present the material or how they're going to do something. That helps to support intrinsic motivation for learning. 
The next one is challenge. Provide students with a continuously challenging activity. Now that's a tough one. How do we get challenging activities for each student? That's hard. Every student is on a different level. We don't know exactly what level every student is on sometimes to provide them with a pro an appropriate level of challenge. But that is what the principle is, is to provide students with a continuously challenging activity. Now a way to do this might be to actually help students to set goals and work with students on their setting their goals to have an, an appropriate level of challenge. Today in our schools it's kind of a difficult situation because we have students of varying abilities all within one grade and, one, and in one class and it's hard to challenge the for instance high achievers and uh, you can't really do that with the whole class you have to leave the the bottom students behind I guess if you wanted to do that but I think a lot of differentiation goes into this as far as learning is concerned figuring out exactly the right types of activities for each student to provide an appropriate level of challenge for their learning one suggestion that they also give to help provide an appropriate level of challenge is to have multiple goals and then intermediate levels of goals maybe to help students to meet those goals and to move toward challenges. The next principle is curiosity and the principle says to provoke students curiosity. And so as a teacher some suggestions you can do to promote their curiosity of course is to highlight areas maybe of inconsistency, incompleteness, in elegance in their knowledge, um, employ activity involving domains, problems, um, case studies come to mind as we as we pique students' curiosity, finding case studies that match what they're interested in. Uh, other things that they might be interested in is matching and finding other activities that may match students' interests and curiosities as they learn. I think one good tip with this is to point out things that just don't make sense or that are inconsistent or that don't work outright and students having to puzzle in their mind or think about what that, that means. That can promote curiosity. The last one is contextualization. This is the last principle in the motivational model of Malone and Lepper, or the taxonomy of intrinsic motivations. Contextualization. And it says highlight the functionality of an activity. For those of you who, are, who have heard of authentic learning, this very much goes along with that whole idea of authentic learning. You want to present an activity or have students do an activity in a naturalistic context of use. Or make it like a context or a simulated type of context so that they learn within a context. And that really helps to support intrinsic motivations for students as they think about how that content can be used in a situation outside of school. So contextualization, very big, big part of this model of m intrinsic motivations. Okay, so that's the model again. The four elements all start with C. Control, challenge, curiosity, and contextualization. Now, when people talk about technology and education and how motivating technology is, it's not just because the technology itself is motivating, it's because it supports these basic principles of motivation. For instance, number one, control. When students are using a piece of technology, it gives them a sense of control. For instance, if kindergartners have iPads in their classroom, they certainly have a sense of control over that iPad and are able to control what they do on that iPad. Even if you restrict their activities within that iPad to, say, one app only, they still can choose a few things in there, right? They can go to the, the story that they want to read. Or maybe even if they want to read a story or you tell them what story to read, they can still maybe click on the characters and hear different sounds as they respond to questions. There's a sense of control there. So that is why the technology supports the motivation. It's not because of the technology itself. It's because it supports this idea of control and the other items in this motivational model as well. Challenge. Well, a lot of games that students play, video games, for instance, is an example. It always provides an optimal level of challenge, and actually the video game does a very good job of adjusting to students' challenge level. A lot of other educational games do the same thing. They can adjust to a student's challenge level. And also technology allows you to differentiate a little bit, right? One student can be on an iPad doing one activity, and another student can be uh, doing another one. So they can have appropriate challenge in that way as well. Curiosity. Are students' curiosities provoked with technology? Absolutely. We have a lot of different things that they can do on these technology um, pieces, and I think that that's one of the things that makes 
technology motivating as well is that they're curious to see what it will do to see what it can provide. Even if they're inside an educational app or on a website where they're learning, it still can provoke their curiosity. And then contextualization. A lot of technologies provide a naturalistic context of use. They talk about the authenticity of what is being learned. And in fact, because of the latest technologies that we do have, we are able to put more of a context onto what we are learning in class a lot of times. We are able to connect to, for instance, other classrooms or communicate with other people who may be a part of our authentic learning experience. We can go onto Google Earth, for instance, and view an actual marketplace in the Philippines if we're learning about that country or in a different state, or whatever we're learning about, we can often use technology to put a context on whatever the learning is. So technology really isn't motivating in and of itself. Technology will only be as motivating as it follows these concepts of control, challenge, curiosity, and contextualization. So the reason why we think that there is a connection between technology and motivation really isn't because of the technology itself. It's because of these elements that the technology offers. And again, those elements of intrinsic motivation are control, challenge, curiosity, and contextualization.